So today we're going to talk about Chinese Valorant, which is actually kind of a big deal because this is the first time, or at least, you know, the first time that I think a large uh, audience has seen a Chinese team play on like kind of a Riot official stage. For those of you who don't know, basically the Chinese pro scene in Valorant kind of is underground you might say and uh, you know they've been hosting their kind of own unofficial tournaments uh between themselves and whatnot but this is kind of the first time they've been a part of a riot sanctioned like you know full thing the chinese teams are in it and uh so it was very exciting to see you know how they would do against teams that you know we have some kind of data on and we know what to expect from those other teams and it turns out they're pretty good right because they destroyed on slayers in their first game 2-0 and uh, let's just take a look at some of the things that they did first off is their team comp which isn't too crazy on both maps on both icebox and fracture they played you know kind of uh, pretty aggressive but not like crazy comps right uh they are playing double duelist here on fracture but this is something that you know many asian teams do uh in particular and uh you know isn't too out of the out of the ordinary to play both neon and rays on this map and so let's start and they're on the defensive side here against onslayers the korean team uh and uh so what they're going to start off with is uh actually a bit of a south side pinch and obviously with the double duelist you would expect that they are going to do uh you know some pretty aggressive things and uh, and that they did uh, because they're going to start off with uh, early stuns down here, right, to take some control. So you see the neon stuns, they come in. They start to uh, walk down here with the chamber as well. And this uh, chamber here, ZimJKK, uh, or however you meant to say that, uh, manages to get the first kill with his op there. And uh, on Slayers, actually, as you can see, are going from dish and they're coming in towards A. The thing is, though, and this, this is what I was perhaps most impressed with and, and was perhaps a bit surprised by, is that this Edward Gaming, they're trading is very good like really good their spacing in between their players when they go for fights is extremely good and a lot of their deaths get traded it is uh really like it impressed me and i wasn't expecting you know their kind of fundamentals like this right where everyone's swinging together i mean even though the brim gets that kill right the brim is actually on the other side of the map but he comes and times the swing with everyone else to come here as well right this is the kind of thing that i'm talking about like in terms of like swinging together as a team they are insanely good and you'll see it in some of the other clips as well uh, and that was the thing that really surprised me that it wasn't necessarily you know they had some really wacky ideas or you know they were playing crazy comps it was, no, they were very solid fundamentally. I mean, you see even here, the chamber there is very aware that, oh, we're in a 3v4. They might push here towards spawn. We've gone, you know, very aware of like things like that. Their situational awareness, their kind of team play. I mean, they put down these smokes here on, on, on the site as well uh, for the retake. You know, they seem to have a very clear plan. You know, they played a lot of retakes, obviously on Fracture with that comp makes a lot of sense. Uh, but, uh, you know, it really did work. And these smokes cause a lot of chaos because on slayers, you know, get kind of separated between the two sides of the team and that allows uh, Edward Gaming here to come on uh, to uh, to the site fully as you can see the Neon's already in there um, and they actually tapped the spike right and this KO was I think hoping to you know kind of be the last alive kind of you know just be a winner 1v1 and in an unexpected position uh, but uh, now that the spike's been tapped you know he's not really aware and they managed to find the kills uh, and uh, they win the round quite convincingly and uh, yeah it was just pretty impressive overall their tactical awareness their situational awareness and their trading was uh, really quite good and now let's come to round 12 as well where what we'll see here is you can see again we've got the breach rays and the neon all grouped up they're going to get aggressive down here and uh, as we can see on slayers are going to go for a bit of a, an optic-esque uh, stairs play here with everyone with their neon so you see on slayers are just gonna yeah full five stack run it down right and comes that famous neon wall stuns all comes in uh the chamber here he's going to uh tp at the last second there just uh, as he gets flashed he gets out the chamber trap goes off but they do manage to get the spike down but he now you're going to see also some of the utility usage can be pretty good here from Edward Gaming as well. They see someone underneath. They send a stun there just to push uh, them back. But then they see uh, Bazzi here peeking out uh, from tower. So the idea that they have for Bazzi here is going to be pretty insane. They see they send the Neon stun and the Breach stun. So he's definitely stunned at this point. And then they're going to send a nade in here as well from the raise. Uh, but this, I mean, just watch this. They're going to send a nade in from the raise. Then they're going to uh, also uh, Brimalt this. Right, so this guy here, this Neon, is stunned. And basically his choice now is, do you want to die to the Nade or do you want to die to the Brimmel? 
right? Because he can't go anywhere, right? The nade is like right on him. So he, ha he has to just, and he's stunned, of course, as well. And there's a breach also coming in here as well. So uh, yeah, it's just uh, not really an ideal position to be in. He's going to get breach ulted. He's going to, I mean, just look at this, right? He's going to get naded, breach ulted. The Brimult's behind him. Uh, he's already stunned. Uh, they've actually managed to get that kill as well. But then, yeah, like what, what do you do, right? So they get a great kill there on, uh, on uh, the Neon. Then they're going to get breach ulted themselves as they start to tap the spike. But then they're going to have a really, really good idea from this raise, which is, you know, they're not expecting you to just stick the spike after you just get breach ulted. But that is what they do. They just get onto the spike. They put up their util to try and, you know, stop any spams. And they somehow manage to stick it. They even had a brim molly there that just isn't quite there in time. And they managed to stick it with plenty of time left. I mean... Uh, they they might have won the round either way because there's still plenty of time left after after that. Uh, but uh, yeah, they managed to win that round. We see some really good util out of them as well. A very good plan, you know, based on that neon was always dead and uh, and a re and another nice retake. And now let's come to their attacking side. And uh, what we're going to see at the start of this one is uh, we're going to get a breach done across here. We're going to get the neon stuns in there. This neon is going to zoom in uh, and get a kill. But unfortunately, as we can see, they are running into a bit of a three stack whilst the rest of the team. So I think they want to go for a bit of an A uh, split here. But unfortunately, uh, they just uh, run into a bit of a stack, as you will see, because the stun comes in. The other neon stun comes in as well. It's all nicely done. But then unfortunately, uh, you know, we do get a trade. And then the, the breach also dies here to that brim and so obviously knowing that okay they've kind of stacked that north side let's go fast in here uh through the other way but unfortunately they do run into the chamber trap uh but now we're in a 3v4 but we're going to see some of the situational awareness, awareness and also an interesting plant spot as well so they start tapping the spike right uh just as a kind of like does this uh, brim want to uh does this Brim want to use his ult? He obviously doesn't. So uh, they start to actually plant the spike properly and they plant it here. And initially I thought this was a bit of a mistake, but you're going to see that this plant spot wins them the round. And I always thought uh, the planting on like the very corner was the best place. Like if you had uh, all the time in the world to plant that this corner was the best place to plant. Turns out it's not because uh, I hadn't ever really thought about this, but this, it turns out on this line here, not exactly where this Brim is planting, but out here, it's actually the best place to plant because it can be seen by dish, can be seen by this, can be seen down here and be seen by by a main. Uh, so yeah, I always thought it was here, but I guess that this one can't be seen from someone in here. And so he's planting for his teammates. And again, you see the situational aware awareness, right? That his teammates have gone pushing towards spawn. So he knows that if they're left alive, they're going to need to be able to see the spike, you know, from back here. Uh, so uh, just a really interesting plant and kind of an interesting idea. And honestly, something that I'd never really thought about too much. But yeah, there they go. Uh, they go planting the spike and uh, and we end up in this uh, 3v4. And so you want to take a risk in a 3v4. And so they do. And they manage to catch someone off guard and get the next kill. Uh, and so we end up in a 3v3. Uh, this uh, breach will manage to uh, get the kill on this chamber. And unfortunately, the brim will die on site as well. But you'll see that plant spot wins them the round because it is a very odd plant spot, right? So the brim dies on site. Uh, this chamber starts sticking the spike thinking he's fine. But they get a free kill because of where the spike's planted because it's in a weird spot. And then they even get to put the raise nade there as well. I'm not sure if that did bounce off the box with the with the uh, brim altar in the way. But you see that this uh, life too plays his life uh, pretty well here and just uses the time. You know, I, I, it annoys me that, you know, not many pros or not all pros, you know, do play the time, I think, as well as they potentially could do. And, you know, try and take fights a bit too often. Uh, but you see that life, you know, plays the time really well. And uh, they manage to, even though he dies, he manages to win on time. And so now let's move on over to the second map, which was Icebox, which was Onslaught's pick. And honestly, this round is maybe a bit more about Onslaught's because I think this is a really cool round. Uh, but uh, I would not pick Icebox if I was playing against Edward Gaming because, as I said, their trades are really, really good. And on Icebox, a map where, you know, you commonly see like five players all grouped together on a team, you know, all just trading off each other. Uh, yeah, that, that suits them pretty well, I would say, overall. And, th and that kind of played out in this map. But I, I just need to talk about the idea from Onslaught because it's a really cool idea so they put up this viper wall here across mid they're running like a g2 comp but instead of sova they've got the fade uh they're gonna get a fade haunt in here they're gonna get uh the, an alarm but they're gonna put down here which i thought was a cool idea but this viper orb as well they're gonna slow on the top of here uh, really interesting, you'll see as, as they run this forward, a uh, really cool idea from Onslaught on their bonus round after winning the pistol. So you see a Lombo gets put down there. Uh, we're going to get uh, the Viper Orb. Look at this Viper Orb. Really, really interesting to kind of cut off the line of sight here with this wall. Uh, really, really cool idea overall, I thought. 
uh, and uh, and it you know gets them gets them in. This is a much more successful B split than most of them. You know, most of them this doesn't go too well. But using the Viper, you know, stuff in this kind of interesting, different kind of way uh, can catch people off guard. And it did get them a kill. The chamber does manage to uh, kill the Viper peeking through that wall there. Uh, but uh, we end up in this four v four. They put a Sage wall down. They do manage to uh, get the spike down uh, with a lot of room. But now we're going to see the retake from Edward. Obviously, they are with better guns in this round, but they're going to use an interesting Sage wall as well. Uh, quite a good idea, I think, particularly. Against Against a bonus where they have worse guns is this right stop any mid lurks coming in right no one's coming around there that allows you to just focus on you know what's in front of you uh, and uh, focus on you know getting these kills which they will obviously again they do have better guns in this round for the most part uh, but uh, I still thought you know it, it was it was a cool round uh, and uh, and yeah onslayers unfortunately do lose but I, I think this is a cool idea and I and you know one that's probably worth stealing and now let's come to round number 19, which is a crazy round because they kind of, sort of, maybe made a mid to A split work on Icebox on their attacking side, which, you know, I mean, it, it, I'm not sure if this really counts, right? They actually start towards B here and that, you know, they actually get seized. Uh, this jet does at least, and uh, they send the drone in and get shoot, shot by the fade as well. But they do technically kind of go mid to A. They do get the first kill and it ends up in a 5v4. So I'm not sure whether this really counts. And I'm not sure really the plan at all was to go mid to A. They just kind of ended up doing it after this jet sees the killjoy come across and sees the killjoy kind of run away to the other side then they make the call to kind of just go for it uh, and so three players do they technically did do a mid to a split which normally should never work on icebox but i mean it wouldn't have mattered anyway you'll see that you know it doesn't really matter because the chamber gets the kill on on the sage anyway before the sage i think even realizes what maybe is going on uh but uh yeah so it would i don't think it really would have mattered i think if they all would have grouped up hey they would have won either way uh we get an absolute ferrari swing there from uh how dong and you just see that they start to clean up and this is kind of how icebox kind of went on the whole that yeah they just have some really good trades and spacing and you know they swing together as a team and uh and in this instance you know they even went a bit crazy and, and tried to go mid to way and it actually worked and then finally let's come to the last round round number 20 and what i've got written in my notes here is just colony of ants uh, because that is what it kind of reminds me of, of how they move about and kind of, you know, are just like one big group that kind of, you know, we're all doing their own individual thing, but they all know, like, you know, what each other are doing, right? And where each other are going to be and, and all of that kind of stuff. And you'll see there, I mean, it's this icebox, so, right, there isn't too much tactically going on. They're just going to go A as a five stack uh, and, uh, and you know, start with the Hunter's Fury. There's nothing really interesting about that round from, from like a tactical sense, uh, but uh, you'll just see that they're all there, right? Chamber takes a swing. He uh, TPs away. There's already four people here, but now you're going to see that they just start moving up as a group, right? It's just one big kind of group that goes together. You see that three people are shooting at uh, the Sage there. They start to come in. Maybe one little thing is that you know they could break another wall segment but you see those two come past the wall at the same time the jet tries to come in the chain starts shooting they start swinging together and then look at how it ends here right with the sage swinging now i'm swinging now the sage is swinging it's like you know just constant and this is kind of you, you see what i mean where they're just that that their trades are really good right that like i said like a colony of ants uh you know working together they're really really good play from edward and, and that was kind of the way it was all the way through the game and uh, and they won pretty convincingly so chinese valorant it turns out is is pretty good well at least edward gaming are, are pretty good uh and uh, you know they were pretty impressive right and so Maybe they can go, I mean, it would be crazy if they went to champs. That really would be, you know, kind of a crazy story that, you know, this team that's really come out of nowhere uh, would go to champs. That would be insane. Uh, but it was very interesting, I think, very unique to see, you know, this, this kind of unknown in Chinese Valorant, you know, come on to kind of the world stage.